Come on. Y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hey, this, this, um, we're, we're going through kind of a theme and, and I want to go ahead and invite our pastors up. Um, so Pastor Shannon and uh, Pastor David and Laura, uh, Pastor Seth and Jesse, Pastor Des, come on up. And uh, we'll, we're, we're doing kind of something a little different. And, um, uh, and here's the reason why. I, I feel like sometimes, from, from what, we need to get to know those who labor amongst us. Come on, how many of y'all know that that's important? But, but also, man, I feel like like just our pastoral staff, last week we had an opportunity to hear from, from P. Trav, from Pastor Daryl and, and, and Sarah and Sunshine and, and just what God's done in their life. But, you know, pastors go through trials and stuff too, you know, but, but we're going through this journey and you get to go through the journey with us. It's powerful, but I'm believing that God is coming back. He's returning for a church without spot or blemish. You know, I, I believe that. And I believe that there's power in the name of Jesus. This is something that the church is like forgotten about. Like, man, we can, as Pastor Darrell said, we can name drop that name of Jesus. I mean, it's powerful. We, I, I, there's been multiple times I'm dealing with a situation, a struggle. As Devin said, we go through temptations. And I will just say that name, Jesus. Jesus. And, and it's not so much that I just know the name. Come on, the, the, the enemy, the d demons know the name of Jesus and they tremble. It's not so much that I know Jesus, it's that Jesus knows me. Come on, he says that my sheep hear my voice. Like me and Jesus have a relationship. He is my friend, I am his friend. You know, it's like that's what it is. When we name drop, the reason Jesus shows up is because we know him and he knows us. It's not like just some magical word, but there's power, power, power in that name of Jesus. So I just wanted to take some time this morning over last week and this week and just hear from our pastors and just let them j just share some of their perspectives on the power of the name of Jesus. You know, many of you know my story. Y'all got to hear from me every week, but we don't have an opportunity to hear from Pastor Desmond or from David or from Laura or for Seth or Jesse. If you're in youth, you hear Seth all the time. Uh, but most I could tell just by looking at you, y'all ain't in y'all in youth. I could tell. <laughs> um, Be nice. Yeah. So, so I just want to take an opportunity and just to kind of just hear from them. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Come on. We overcome by the blood. We talked about the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. Come on. There's power in the testimony. So, um, so I just want to take some time and look, Couples or, or as individuals, however you want, and just share some thoughts on, on how has the name of Jesus changed your life? So who wants to go for it? David, you, I see that looks. Laura actually holding the microphone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, hang on, hang on. Before I do this, I need to introduce... So, I'm, I mean, I need to give an introduction. I'm making assumptions that every, everybody knows who everybody is, right? Sorry, David. I didn't mean to just stop your thought. We do this in real time, unrehearsed. I know you can't tell. This is Pastor Desmond. Desmond's our discipleship pastor. Uh, he's been with us for like two years, huh? Three years. Three years. Holy smokes. You're getting old, man. So, you know, Pastor Desmond, he just came, he brings the enthusiasm and excitement into the house, you know, he brings the youthfulness, but... Wait, wait, but, can I but, say something? Yes. So Desmond is the only person I know that spells his name with an exclamation mark at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. We love you, Desmond. But, but, but Desmond has a, I mean, there's a whole story. Me and Desmond have a connection that goes back probably four or five years that includes his dad. And, and uh, I mean, it was just a divine appointment. God really brought him here. Yeah. And man, we just appreciate, we love what God's doing in your life. Just seeing, yeah. I mean, even seeing, you know, you grow in your faith, but then growing in your calling. Uh, God's really put a zeal in your heart, man. And I believe that, that, that he's honoring that zeal yeah. because you're honoring the zeal. 
You know, it's like when you honor the things that God put in your heart, he honors the things that he put in your heart. Come on. We, we activate the things of God in our life by faith and by recognition. So, man, I just appreciate you. Love you so much. Uh, th- th- David and Laura have been with us since the very beginning. I mean, y'all were here before us. Laura is a basketball state championship, (laughs) basketball state championship, first assembly Christian school, uh, 1993, I think it was. Uh, No, okay. (laughs) Yeah. My, My goal is just to, every day I wake up, how can I embarrass Laura today? But... Yeah, David. Yeah, it's co-partnership. Hey, so, I mean, really, me and David and Laura and Shannon and all of us have been just really great friends, best friends, some of the first people we got connected with at First Assembly 10 years ago. And uh, I still remember inviting them over to our house and and just having, we celebrated Passover once and just took some time and prayed with each other. You know, there's, it's like, man, there's something to be said about people who are just close friends, you know, and, and you know, that that gets wrapped up around like interests and and common Jesus. ages and and Jesus and all that, but but man, just to have someone as faithful as David and Laura Clark in your life, man, it they're just faithful friends. We appreciate what God's doing in your life. So they're a worship leader, and Laura helps out in multiple areas, including care ministry, women's ministry, children's ministry. I'm sure the, the facility ministry, the taking care of 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 they they have joint custody over our dogs, so. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Seth and Jesse ha- uh, Griffin, they're our youth pastors. And, and Jesse served as our ministry administrator and worship leader and all this. Uh, just amazing couple, man. And, um, and I, I'm just telling you, like, they are a blessing. When you talk about a, a couple that has complementary characteristics, they're the ones I mean, they have, Seth can do anything. Yeah. I'm just telling you, yeah. Seth yeah. can do anything. He can fix anything he can and he can out. do anything. He, he's, he really reminds me of me. He's like, if you give me enough time, <laughs> if you give me enough time and money, I can that? fix anything. Okay. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Des- Desmond just put an exclamation point on whatever I said. I like, <laughs> and, but anyway, uh, and, and well, when you have a Jesse, you can really do anything. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, there you go. And a Jackson. Yeah, Jackson. So well, they're just all really just such a blessing. And man, just a young couple in ministry. I, I know and see that God is going to do some just extraordinarily awesome things with you guys in the kingdom. Man, your yes is the most powerful antidote to the sin of this world that, that has ever seen. Like your yes, it just the, the devil's like, not another one. I mean, because y'all said yes to the ministry yeah. and y'all minister in our youth department, but man, y'all minister to me. Y'all minister yeah. to Shannon. Y'all minister to our staff and minister yeah. to our church. So yeah. thank you for being just such an awesome couple. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Also, like, no matter what, where you go, like you always say that if we leave, you leave with us. <laughs> if you leave, guys, better watch out. That's all I'm saying, because we, we love them. <laughs> no, they're amazing. They, they, um, they have their hand in everything in the church and, and, and never complain. I mean, I, I have never seen them be complainers. They truly will work their fingers to the bone for the kingdom of God. So um, if you get an opportunity, can you just like love on these guys? Because they're all doing that for you guys, for the church, for the kingdom, for the community. I mean, they do stuff you don't even know about. You know, they go to the schools on Wednesdays and preach gospel to the, you know, public school. They go to coffee at 720 in the morning. They, They do a lot of things, so... No, amen. It's so true. So I, I just want to take some time, let y'all share, and let, the, let us hear from you. And what, how does the name of Jesus, how did that impact your life? What's the power? Tell me about the power of Jesus. I mean, that's such a big question. Like, uh, I mean, it really impacted my life because I, I wouldn't even be sitting here. I mean, the, the, 
you know, the Bible says that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, um, and I can remember when I was in college and I'd left and, you know, I'm, so I'm an, I'm, I'm an identical twin. Um, so, so, so my identity, you know, all through school was this, I was, I was one of, you know, I was, it's Timothy and David. It's, you know, it's, you know, one of the twins. And so when I went off to college, my brother and I, you know, separated, he went one place, I went to another place. And so I decided that that was the moment that I was going to be David. I wasn't going to be David and Timothy. I wasn't going to be a twin. I was just going to be that. And, uh, and so while I was there, I, I mean, through a, a long series of events, God put me around some people and I can remember all, you know, right at the end of high school, I guess I really should say this first, my brother got saved when we were juniors in high school and he faithfully prayed for me and witnessed to me. And I hated it. I mean, I cursed him and just told him all of his junk and I was a great Holy spirit. I'm just saying, if you need anybody, don't call me. Uh, but that that it wasn't that he just planted the seed. He tilled the soil. He, you know, he loved me. He, he took that, that abuse. And, um, so anyway, so then, so then I went off to college and I, you know, all this time I'm, man, I'm convicted. I know that Jesus is just, he's got my number and he is calling it daily. And I can remember this shift in my heart where God did something to me. And I, I still, even to this day, I don't really I remember all the events, but it, it, it was literally like just, I was one way one day, and then a minute later, I was a totally different other thing. And um, yeah, look, please give him praise. He is worthy of it. And I, I can remember the, the difference that, that uh, this was the difference. I, I remember telling him, for a long time, I'll come to you when I'm ready. And that difference was that when that shift happened, I begged him to take me back. Because I, I knew that, that there was something that I, that I didn't understand. And, and so then once my eyes were opened, I thought, all these people in high school knew about this. Like all these people that I grew up with, all these people that were around me, that loved me, like this is the Jesus that they knew. And, I, and I'm like, I don't even know how you can still tell people about that Jesus without... God doing that thing in them, right? But we have got to just continue to try, right? I mean, it's just our job to say, let me just tell you about the Jesus that I met. Not, not this platitude Jesus, not this Jesus without power, but like a real, let me tell you about what he did yesterday. And it has to be that, y'all. It has, we, we, us, we all have to have that. It's got to be Jesus yesterday. It can't just be Jesus 10 years ago uh, because Jesus better be doing stuff in our lives today. Um, so, what does the name of Jesus mean? I mean, it, 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 his name first meant salvation, That's right. and then it meant redeemer, and then it meant healer, and then it meant uh, it meant peacemaker. It meant uh, um, it meant promised. Oh my gosh! It meant restorer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, really, I could go on and on and on about what his name means uh, because it means so many things now. Right? Is the, the longer we walk in him, the more we realize. His name is not just one thing. It's, it's not even 10 things. It's, it's everything. It's everything that we need. Amen. That's it. Can I just add one thing to you? Real quick. Um, so he just said he's everything. I had one specific time in my life. Um, God literally spoke that to me. It was a, um, I was praying about something, some transition, and I was just praying, and I was just listing all these things. I was like, God, you'd have to be my provider. God, you'd have to be my comforter. You'd have to be this. I'm listing all these things, God. I was like, I would need you to be this. And he just whispered to me. He's like, I am everything that you need. I, I am your everything. And so, and that's it. So it is. Amen. No, that's so good, man. It's so good. You know, and, and, and we have to understand that that's who Jesus is. His name, he is everything. And it's, it's not something I can explain. It's unexplainable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so powerful, so powerful. Pastor Desmond? Well, for me, uh, I would describe it as salvation and freedom. Um, freedom in many areas of my life uh, because before I uh, became born again, uh, I was in a life of addiction for many, many years. Um, and I really grew up in a dysfunctional home. Uh, mom and dad split up when I was young. Didn't have a father figure in my life as a teenager, so I didn't have anybody to guide me, to show me how to be a young man. 
And I was hurt by that because I felt like my father didn't want to have nothing to do with me. And I didn't really know both sides of the story because my mom was painting this picture like he didn't want to have nothing to do with you. But really, I, didn't, I just believed everything mom said because I was living under her roof and I didn't see the other side of the picture. So all these lies, the enemy made me feel like I was not a good enough son to my dad or my mom. Uh, I could never amount to being a good enough son to my dad or my mom. And I carried that for a very, very long time. And um, in my home with my mom, I really, uh, the, the home was chaotic. It was like people living under a roof, but we weren't a family. And so every time I could escape, I would look for a way to escape. Every time I could run, I would look for a place to run. And the things I started running to was uh, wrong crowds. I started hanging around wrong people. I was in middle school hanging out with high schoolers. Uh, started getting involved with, uh, with sex and alcohol and drugs. And these things started to form addictions in my life uh, for quite some time in my middle school and high school years uh, to the point where <clears throat> I shouldn't be sitting here today in front of all of you because uh, at the age of 17, I uh, ended up in the hospital because I almost died behind alcoholism and alcohol poisoning. Um, the doctor said, you are lucky to be alive. Uh, if you'd have just consumed a little bit more at that party, um, you probably wouldn't be here. And I was 17 at that time, and I told him, I'm not lucky. I said, God has given me a second chance to change my life. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do from this point on, but I don't want this life anymore. And so, like I said, I was bound by a lot of things. I had bitterness and unforgiveness that I was changed to. I, would cha I was chained to bitterness and unforgiveness for many years towards my family, my mom and my dad. I was chained to alcoholism for many years. I was chained to sex addictions and pornography addictions for many years. I was chained to all those things. And I finally said, you know what? I felt these things, chasing these things would give me love. I felt chasing these things would give me peace. I felt these things would make me feel like I was cared for because I wasn't getting it from my family. But it was really a lie from the enemy. He was, he was really trying to take me out because God had a call in my life. And so I remember I had curly hair back then. I was 17 years old. I, <laughs> I don't have hair anymore. But uh, I remember I walked into a full gospel church. And the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached so powerfully. And I was under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I was weeping throughout the whole service. And I ran up to the altar. And I just fell on my knees. And I'm like, Lord. You can have all of me. You can have all of me. I don't want this anymore. I, I laid out my addictions to drugs. I laid out my addictions to alcoholism. I laid out my addictions to sex outside of marriage. I laid out my addictions to pornography. And, and, and in that moment, I, my salvation was so radical. Nobody had to tell me, you got to go to this class. You got to go do this thing. The power of the Holy Spirit broke every chain, broke every addiction. To where 18 years later, I'm making the devil pay for the 17 years that he stole out of my life. Come on, baby. Because you know why? Yeah. God started to, God says, at, at the age of 17, God says, I'm calling you into the ministry. And I'm going to place people in your life that you're going to bring freedom in. You're going to help them come out of addiction. You're going to help them come out of unforgiveness. You're going to help them come to the Lord. And I've been doing that the last 18 years of my life. And I just said, devil, you had your one chance to take me out. But you didn't do it. And now I'm making you pay. Amen? Amen. That's it. <laughs> Man. You know, one of, the, one of the powerful things about Jesus. You know, it reminded me when, when Pastor Desmond was sharing. It remind, you know, you want to know why he's excited. Look what God's done in his Look life. Look what he did. Look what he's you know, doing. That's, that's all it is. Um, I, I, I remember when, when Jesus healed a blind man, and the blind man got excited, running and leaping and jumping. And, you know, I mean, just he's excited about what God has done in his life. And, you know, they, the, the Pharisees and the religious people says, what right, by what authority you know, what, how, did, how did this happen? And the guy's like, listen, I don't know who Jesus is. I don't, can't explain it all. All I know is that once I was blind, but now I can see. Come on, that's the power of the gospel. It's the power to transform and change and open our eyes to the things we couldn't see before. You know, I, I mean, it's so powerful when God does a miracle in our life like we've experienced. I, I mean, I've found, we've all found freedom. In, in some kind of capacity. I mean, that's what, that's what qualifies us to be 
ministers of the gospel is that we got saved, you know, we got saved. I I just have this picture of like all of us, including, you know, Daryl and Sarah and Travis and Sunshine and and, and me and Shannon and all of us just kind of like in a, in a boat and, you know, somebody reached down and grabbed us and pulled us on the boat. I mean, somebody else did that. I didn't do that. I didn't climb my way on the boat. Somebody pulled me on that boat. Now I've just turned around and I'm trying to pull as many people onto the boat as I possibly can. And that's our calling. That's the calling of the ministry. So, so, uh, Seth and Jesse, I mean, tell us about it. Why is Jesus so powerful in your life? Well, I think about this question, and I think I could go so many different ways, but uh, yeah. the, the, number, the number one reason that I'm here and we're here really is the leading of Jesus. You know, like I think about as a kid growing up in the, in the Catholic church and, you know, I was in Catholic church twice a week, you know, on Fridays for Catholic school and, you know, and on Sundays for actual service and, you know, God use the, the situation of divorce between my parents to get my whole family into uh, an Assemblies of God church and take us deeper into learning about him, you know, and not just the catechism, but, but the Bible, you know. And, and from, from that, the, God didn't stop there, you know. He put my family back together. My parents didn't get divorced. They're, they're together today, uh, you know. And continuing, you know, like he, he placed people in my life, you know, that, that whenever I didn't feel the presence of God the way I thought I, that, that it was explained to be, or it didn't feel like uh, I was getting anywhere, was, you know, it just felt like I was going to church, and, and God placed people in my lives at the right moment to say, you're disengaged, you're not engaging the way you should, you're not uh, posturing yourself to, to be in the presence of God, and like, God just, so, you know, like, because these were people that I respected and I called friends, you know, it, it could, I, I took their advice, you know, and it's, and then I could see, wow, now I feel the, the, the presence of God in my life more. And, and I, I could see God continuing to lead. And, and towards the end of my high school years, I, I felt that God was calling me to, hey, like, you're, you're going to be in the ministry. And, well, what does that look like, you know? And I remember applying for Bible college and, and God used a series of situations and, and opportunities and to say, that's not where you're going to Bible college. Well, you were accepted, but that's not where you're going. And I ended up uh, at Bible college right in Lafayette, you know? Like, I probably wouldn't be here if I had went to Bible college in Texas, you know? Like, it would have been a, the long way, right, I guess, you know? And, <laughs> And like, and for Jesse, she was she was planning fully planning on going to a Bible college in Texas as well. Two, like two different Bible colleges yeah. that God closed the door on both of those and sent us both to the same place here in Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> like the the leading of God has just been so powerful. And like, I could have ignored it. I could have still did what I wanted to do, but it would have. I don't see it leading me here, you know, and. And, and being, being placed where I'm at today, and, you know, it's, it's been an amazing time that, you know, being able to see God do uh, amazing things in the students here, you know, like, right, I was thinking about it uh, yesterday, Friday, sorry, I was thinking about it because I was talking to, to Wyatt, uh, who's Jesse's cousin, and I was like, man, you're, you're in Bible college now, you know, like, and then we got two other students that are in Bible college now, and, you know, you got uh, other three. students who are like, three. three others, yes, and then we've got other students who are, like, really pushing forward the, the missions of Chi Alpha, and, you know, like, like amazing stuff, but, but it, it all really came down to the leading of God to get, to get me here, you know, I, I remember, I went through this this waiting period uh, after I had finished uh, Bible college and my internships, and I was, I was going through the interview process at, at church after church after church, and I feel like got either the person that I would interview with would tell me this isn't for you, or after they'd offer me the job, I'd feel like this isn't for me, you know, like, and it, it just it was over and over and over again, and I, I remember being. So frustrated. I mean, I was, I was in a, a season of life where I was just 
painting and doing construction work. And I'm like, God, you, you called me to, to do ministry, and I don't feel like I'm, I'm really ministering that often in, in this painting position. I get to talk to homeowners every once in a while about Jesus, but that, I was like, it's not where I, where I felt like you were leading me to. And I, I'm just, I'm seeing closed door after closed door after closed door. And so at one point, the guy I was painting for says, I've got some friends who are pastors in Youngsville, and I, I, think, uh, I think it would be good if you, uh, if you met them. And, and it's like, the, the person I was painting, yeah, the person I was painting for was also the person that connected me to where I've been the last five years. You know, like, like tell me God's leading. It doesn't exist. Like, that's a, a long series of coincidences, if not. And I, I don't believe that. Like, I can't. I can't believe that. You know? And Jesus has just been so faithful in my life. You know, he's just, he's, he's loved me. And, and you know, I can I read his word and I'm like, you know, like, the, the, even the, the cliches, you know, like, you, people say, oh, that's cliche to say God has a plan and a purpose and a future for you. No, it's not. Like, I've, I've seen the plans and the purposes of God continue to happen in my life. Like, I mean, so often I, I think people want to say, oh, it's coincidence. It's not. It's not. That's good. No, that's good. No, come on. That's good. I mean, it's, it's the name of Jesus. It's, it's the name above every other name, you know, even our, the name above our plans. I have a, a similar story. I remember when I'd first gotten saved, I hadn't been saved for very long. And I mean, faithfully serving Jesus with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then I met a firecracker in church, you know, like, and her name was Shannon. And when I tell you head over heels, I was head <laughs> over heels. But I also wanted to stay in church, okay? Because I, mean, I didn't just want to go to church because Shannon was in church. I wanted to go to church. I wanted to get involved. I wanted to stay faithful to the stuff that God had called me to. Now, the problem was I didn't really have a job. I had, didn't have a driver's license. I was trying to get through three DWIs, multiple convictions and charges and this and that. Just got delivered from alcoholism and addiction and all this. My, my life was just getting started. And, and like my dad called me and said, Joe, I've got a job for you working back in the oil field. All you have to do is move to Houston. I've already, I know all of your coverall sizes. I've got your coveralls. I've got your patches. I've got your tally books and got you some fresh new calipers and all this other stuff. He says, come on, move to Houston. And I'm like, no. <laughs> it, it made no sense in the natural, but it made perfect sense to my spirit because I felt Jesus was saying, Joe, just stay and I'll take care of you. And, and I'm, I'm totally 100% convinced had I left and kind of, and, and went over there for one, I don't know that me and Shannon would be married, but for two, I don't know that God would have intervened on my behalf to get my charges erased, to, to continue to walk me through deliverance and, and all that stuff. Man, it is so powerful. Thank you for sharing that, Seth, that we have to be sensitive to the voice of Jesus in our life. Every decision, even if it leads us to painting on our knees, think, man, God, you've got a plan. Come on, if you think back in the book of 1 Samuel, you know, God... Uh, God had Saul on a, on a wild adventure of chasing donkeys through the countryside. Y'all know this story? I mean, he said, God, uh, Saul's dad said, Saul, I need you to go, the donkeys have escaped, go find them. He's running through the, the countryside looking for some lost donkeys, right? But it was in the midst of that monotonous, meaningless task that he comes across a man who prophesied over him and anointed him as the king of Israel. Come on, I mean, sometimes God can begin to speak to us in the midst of our donkey duties, you know? 
I mean, don't think just because God don't have you on the mission field, he ain't doesn't have a plan for you. Don't think because God is doesn't have you pastoring a church or pastoring this church or, or even part of the leadership team or whatever, that he doesn't have you exactly right where he wants you to be. Don't think that whenever somebody asks you to go work the spotlight at a Christmas play, that God doesn't have you right where he needs you to be. I mean, that's it. It's just obedience and faithfulness leads to the blessings and the glory of God in your life. So let's just kind of go through just real quick. Uh, any just last any words of encouragement, maybe, or Jesse, did you have something you wanted to share specifically? Specifically? I mean, no. <laughs> and then we're going to partake in communion. Yeah. Um, wrap it all up for us. Oh, Jesse. wrap. All right. Here we yeah. go, guys. Story time. No. Um, well, I mean, I was like talking here with God, like, God, what do you want me to say? Um, but I was raised up in the assemblies of God, and um, I, I relied on the church. I, I was just so used to just going to church, and my parents were pastors. And just side note, I just want to thank my parents for how they raised me and everything that they instilled into me. And um, they are the best. And, um, but I, I grew up in church, so seeing, uh, miracles, tongues, interpretation, all of it, people running around the church, blowing chauffeurs and all that, I'm like, this is normal. <laughs> this is absolutely normal. And then like other people, all the kids would be like, you're crazy. <laughs> you're absolutely crazy. I'm like, mm, this is just my lifestyle. And, um, I realized when I got older that I relied on the church and I relied on my parents for the voice of God in my life. Um, I was so used to being spoon fed and I was so used to hearing the word of God at church, learning all my Bible stories at church that I was like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. And I did. I was fully like, yes, God is my savior and my rock. But it got to the point whenever I was growing up, I don't know the voice of God. How do I hear the voice of God? How do I do this? And um, I remember in Bible college, one of my first classes, um, I, I remember sitting there and uh, thinking to myself, I already know this stuff. Like the, the, they were talking about lordship. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, you did a lot, to, you did a lot of mountain moving to get me here to this school. And... I'm sitting through classes and I'm like, I already know this stuff. I've been brought up in church. Like, God, what are you, what are you calling me to do? And he's like, everything that you think you know, I want you to forget it. And I'm like, but I'm going to reteach you these things. I'm going to be the one to instill this stuff into you. I'm going to be the one to speak it into you. And so from that moment on, it's like God just like started a whole new slate with me. And I just started hearing simple scripture that many of us know. And I, it just started, started hitting me at such a deeper revelation. And I'm like, God, I thought I knew this and just trusting God. And, and so I think, um, just the leading of God, just like what Seth was saying, I think that's why both of us are just so passionate about the youth. And trying to get them to realize you can follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You can hear the voice of God for yourself. Um, and now that I know the voice of God, he don't stop. <laughs> um, and because of that, I'm going to lead into this real quick. Um, Lainey, that's your name, right? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> My husband remembered your name. I was like, what's her name? Um, I just really felt in worship. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be on stage later. Maybe God will give me the opportunity. I really feel like there was a, maybe sorrows that you've had in prayer with God or that you've, like, God, why this or why that? And I don't really know what those things are that you've been battling, that heaviness on your heart that you've been bringing to God lately. Not sure if he's really going to answer that prayer. Not sure where the direction is. Um, but I really felt like, there's a promise that he's giving you that he wants you to remember, hey, I need you to hold on to this. And then I also really felt, I'm going to use your little boy. 
I'm really going to use your little boy. And then I heard him say, and the next one. So I just want to, I, I wanted to speak that over you. And um, the voice of God is real and he wants to speak to you too. So um, the voice of God is real. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Man, that's good. You got anything for me? He said. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I do. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Oh, is this like a rebuke right here in front of everybody? No. Oh my gosh. No, man, like so so, you know, so we we uh and, and maybe this is a weird, you know, moment, but you know, you guys you guys really got a chance to brag on us, but I mean, man, y'all, what an amazing couple. Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah. It, it's only Jesus. It's Jesus. It's just Jesus. But thank y'all. It's Jesus. I mean, really. I'm like Paul. I'm the worst of all sinners. I mean, you know. So. I mean, look, look. look thank so, you. so thank that's you, thank you, and, thank you. and that's the thing. Every, look, everybody up here is probably like, yeah. I mean, everybody else is really amazing, but you know, whatever, right? But me, but but they really are. They're an amazing couple. That the the people that you get here, the people that you get when you talk to them, it is the exact same people that they are at home, that they are at wherever, right? They are the most gen. You guys, I'm not. I'm not talking. Y'all are the most genuine people that I know. Yes. You guys love Jesus. You have pushed me harder than I want to be pushed. Uh, and I can say that for all of us. Uh, you've put us in, in places where we're like, I, I, don't, I don't want to get there. And you're, I mean, you're like, and you're like I'm, I'm okay with friction. I'm okay with awkward. I'm okay with, and, and I, but I appreciate that about you guys because there's so many people that, that aren't willing to, to say the hard things. They're not willing to go through the friction. They're not willing, they're not willing to go through the process. And I mean, even when you guys took over as the, as, you know, took over as pastors, you know, I, I feel like in some ways, you know, I, kind of, I got a little bit more of a unique experience to watch y'all uh, not only grow because I knew you guys before you were pastors, but, but all, yeah, as, as best friends, but also how you were going to handle that, that transition. And I watched you guys just, you know, we're going to get here and we're going to kind of just see what it's about and see what everybody's about and see where they are. And, and you guys kept finding spots for people, even though you're, even though the vision was shifting, you were like, we're going to try to find places for people to plug in because we because they've been faithful, because they've been here, because they, you know, and so I I watched you guys with that, with that heart and with that, you know, just with that, right? I mean, just who you are. I mean, you're so awesome. My goodness gracious, you're so awesome. So, so we love you guys. I I mean, I know I'm speaking for them. I'm speaking for you guys. I'm speaking for all, for all of us. Uh, We love y'all. And, and you guys really are the, you're the real deal. And we are so honored to have you guys as our pastors. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate it. Yeah. This is hard. It's hard. This is hard. But, you know, God called me to it. I, I remind myself, I mean, Shannon, I all, all the time. I remind you of this. I remind him. Shannon reminds me of this all the time. It's, it's not a, this that. isn't a ministry of convenience. It's a ministry of calling. And uh, I let that kind of guide me through all of my, our difficult seasons. But, you know, what's really cool about, one of the defining things that I really want to be known for as a church is, you know, prayer praise, proclamation, uh, <clears throat> presence, there's another P, but really is that a family church? We're family. You know, families get a little, I mean, uh, look, a messy sometimes. if your family is anything like mine, okay, it ain't perfect, right? But it's ours, you know, and our church isn't perfect, but it's ours. And and, you know, p- p- one of the things that makes us a family is that we're all blood related. Did you know that? We're all blood related. Yeah. We're related through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's what binds us together. You know, it really is. So I just want to take some time as unawkwardly. Sometimes family just has awkward moments, but I just want to take some time and have communion with all of us and with all of you here this morning. So could we just uh, stand to our feet as we prepare and and uh, I guess I can stand on my feet as well. And maybe <laughs> David or Jesse, just hop on a piano. And um, Laura, you can hop on a mic and uh, start singing. Oh, sorry. 
Um, ushers, would you come and just help as we prepare for communion? And, and um, so what we'll do, I want to just take a moment. We're going to take the elements together and, and we'll just kind of form a line and, and we'll, if the, this t- these two rows can kind of go to the, that aisle in the middle and come down, the ushers will give you some guidance. Take the cup, take the, the, the matzo bread, and just bring that back to your chair. And then once everybody has theirs, we'll partake together. So if we could just, uh, we can begin that now. If you want to make your way and just start just getting the elements together and we'll partake as quickly as we can here this morning. This is the word here in the flesh living among the meek and lowly the voice of God is every breath salvation of the world unfolding behold him behold him lift up your eyes see the sun of his heart upon the cross and from his wounds his mercy is flowing and now the dawn put death to death and ever since that grave's been empty be Behold it. 
time. Let's sing that together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was blessed. It's just amazing grace. It's amazing grace. It's what binds us together. It's his amazing grace that allows us to tolerate one another. We're all family. You know, even in the midst of Jesus' betrayal, it was grace that opened the door for him to share communion with his betrayer. In 1 Corinthians, we read from Paul, he says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me would you take that bread cracker this is matzo bread if you have a piece that's big enough you'll notice that this bread is very symbolic of the same bread that the israelites used during the passover unleavened bread you'll notice it's pierced just as the body of christ was pierced for us you'll notice it's got little brown spots where it was burned well this bread is bruised in the same way that christ's body was bruised for us in fact the the piercings that this bread looks striped the same way that his body is striped was striped for our healing come on the the atonement and the fullness of understanding of passover is found through the broken body of jesus christ so, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Lord, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my church. I thank you for this body of believers that are seeking after you. The name that's above every name. That name of Jesus. So, Lord, we protect together. We ask that you bless this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we protect together. Would you take the cup? Paul tells us in the same manner, Jesus also took the cup after supper, 
saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Well, this blood, this cup represents blood that represents a covenant, a covenant of grace, a covenant of mercy, a covenant of peace with his people. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for this covenant. Lord, that we're no longer bound by your law, but Lord, you came to fulfill the law on our behalf. So, Lord, we receive that and we thank you for it. Lord, and we partake together as a symbol of unity. Lord, that it's as we partake together, Lord, we are together in one mind and one accord. And we thank you for that. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we partake? You feel free to put those cups in the chair backs in front of you. They've got some little holes, and we'll take those up later. But I want to take an opportunity and just pray as a family, something we don't get to do too often. So if you could, would you just take the hand of the person next to you? Come on, even if you don't really like them, grab their hands. I just want to pray. Lord, thank you. Come on, can you say that? Say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy. Lord, thank you for this family, this body of believers. Lord, I pray that it's as, as we have come to you today, Lord, that you honor, that you bless every person here. Lord, that you just pour out your blessings upon them in ways they never could understand. Lord, that, Lord, pour out your blessings like you poured out blessings on Kathy's life. Uh, that you poured out on, on Desmond's life, on David's life, on Seth's life, Lord. Lord, on all of our lives, Lord. It's the common denominator of our faith is you, Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that you are with us and you are for us. Lord, and I thank you that you're going to do wonderful and amazing things as we pursue you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Come on, can we give the Lord just a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, listen. I'll be blessed. Thank you so much for joining with us. And um, I, I just want to encourage you, if you've never followed the Lord in water baptism, if you need, uh, would you do that? And just, I know this is kind of awkward right now, but it is what it is sometimes. I mean, we want to be just a family of believers. You know, why, why does church have to always feel performancy? I don't think it does. So if you want to follow the Lord in water baptism today, we want to give you an opportunity. If you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you've never been baptized, fully immersed, you can do that right now today. And we're going to stay and celebrate with you. If that's you, uh, would you just make your way over to Pastor Desmond right here? He's by the cross. And, uh, and we'll just do that today. We've got a t-shirt for you to wear home, a dry one if you want to bring it. So, But other than that, if, if any, anybody going to be baptized today, amen. If you want to get baptized, we fill up the tank every single Sunday. And uh, we've baptized, like, you know. Yeah. Whew, man. Thank you, David. I didn't know what to do. I was like, if the music ain't playing, I don't know. Yeah. Like, trying to talk without music is like trying to go through life without emotions. You know? It's a little awkward. But anyway. Thank y'all for coming. If y'all need prayer, our altar ministry team will be here. We'll pray with you. We'll spend some time just coming into agreement with you in prayer. If you just want to share what God's done in your life, you can come feel, tell some of our altar ministry workers, just tell them, I just want to share a praise report. Would you just come share that with them? And they would love to hear what God is doing as much as I want to hear what God's doing. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see y'all Monday night for prayer at 630 right here at First Assembly. Have a blessed day.